Hi everyone, it's Taren. And Stella here from Maple University. Thanks for joining us. Today we'll be teaching you how to play Azul Queen's Garden. So hopefully you'll be in a position to play this game once you've watched the video. Stay tuned. Let's learn to play Azul Queen's Garden. Game designed by Michael Kiesling and published by Next Move Games. And if you find value from this video later, please hit the like button, subscribe to us, hit the bell and leave your feedback in the comments for others to find. For now, let's get to the table. Azul Queen's Garden is the fourth game in Michael Kiesling's Azul series of games. As in its predecessors, players will be drafting tiles from a common display in order to try to build up a beautiful and high scoring pattern this time building up a garden. Players will place garden extensions and pattern tiles in order to build up the patterns, trying ultimately to make clusters of tiles in the same colour or the same pattern, or ideally overlapping combinations of both. The player who can score the highest scoring combination of tiles over four rounds of play will win the game. To set up, give each player a matching coloured garden board and storage board, as well as scoring cube, which starts on a score of 15. Each player puts a fountain tile in the centre of the garden board, and places three grey joker tiles onto storage slots of the storage board. On the central board, rotate the wheel to the top so it shows the scoring icons for the first round. This will be the second, third and fourth round. Next, you'll set up the tile bag. Unlike in previous Azuls, there are 36 different tiles in the game, and there are three copies of each. Each tile has a colour and one of six patterns. The colours are all equivalent, but the patterns are not. Each pattern has its own value. The tree has a value of one, the bird two, three, four, five, and six. Each icon has a graphical clue, one tree, two wings, four petals, and so on. And you're also reminded of the values at the top of your garden board. Put all 108 tiles into the bag. Next, set up the garden extensions. Each of these is double-sided, one side being empty and one side showing a pre-printed version of one of the 36 tiles. To set them up, shuffle all garden extensions face down and then make four face down stacks, one for each round, and a leftover stack on which you'll place the negative six points shield. The four round stacks should each be five high in a two player game, seven high in a three player game, or eight high in a four player game. Choose a first player, but don't give them the first player marker. Keep that nearby alongside the spare jokers. Finally, set up the current round by placing this round's garden extension stack and drawing four tiles from the bag to place on top. You're now ready to play. Azul is played in four rounds, with intermediate scoring at the end of each round and final scoring at the end of the game. Each round is played in turns, starting from the first player and going clockwise around the table. Each player may take as many turns in a round as they like, up until the point that they take the pass action on their turn, at which point they're out of the round. The round ends once all players have passed once. On your turn, you will take one action, and that action can be to take tiles and garden extensions from the supply, or to place a tile into your garden, or to place a garden extension into your garden, or to pass. So now let's look at each action in detail. First we'll look at taking tiles and garden extensions, and players familiar with earlier versions of Azul should note that this works quite differently to how it worked in those earlier games. At the start of the round, all you'll be able to see is four tiles on top of a stack of extensions. But later in the round, as we'll describe shortly, there can be face-up garden extensions, face-down garden extensions containing tiles, and the central stack. All visible tiles and any face-up garden extensions with their pre-printed tile visible are available to be taken from the supply. To acquire them, name one colour 
or one pattern. You must then take all tiles of that colour or pattern, excluding any duplicates. So for example, if I were to say light green, I would have to take these two tiles. If I declare the six tulips, I would have to take these two tiles. And if I declared pale blue, I would have to take these three tiles and then could only take exactly one of this tile or this garden extension, as they show a duplicate tile. All tiles and garden extensions taken must be placed into empty storage slots on the player's storage board. There are 12 slots for tiles and two slots for extensions, and if you don't have enough space to put your entire hall, then you cannot take that action. Then refresh the supply. If the central stack has fewer than four tiles on it, then take the top extension and all of its tiles and place it in the supply like so. Draw four new tiles from the bag and then add them to the top of the stack. Then if any garden extensions which have been moved from the stack no longer have any tiles on them, then flip them face up, making the pre-printed tile visible. Play will then pass to the next player with all of these new options available. The second action is to place a tile into your garden. And this can be broken down into two steps. First paying the cost, and then making a legal placement. So first choose a tile from your storage area that you want to place. Suppose it's this blue flower. That tile's cost in tiles is equal to its value, so in this case 4. The cost must be paid in either tiles of the same colour or tiles of the same pattern with a total amount spent equaling the value and with no duplicates. The pre-printed tile on a garden extension can be spent as part of the cost and a joker can be spent to count towards one of any cost. So there are many different ways to pay for this tile. I could pay in light blue, spending these four blue tiles. Or instead of paying this bird tile, I could pay this garden extension depicting a bird tile. But I could not spend this as the cost because these two would count as a duplicate. Alternatively, I could pay the cost in flower tiles like so, with these four tiles, or again using the garden extension to replace one of the tiles because it shows a pre-printed flower. Or if I wanted to save some of these tiles, I could spend jokers to represent as much of this cost as I can afford. However, I am not allowed to mix the cost. The cost must be paid in either all matching patterns or all matching colours with no duplicates. As you can see from this, a tile counts towards its own cost. Once you've determined how you're going to spend the cost, you'll move the tile that you're placing onto its new location on your garden board discard any spent tiles to the discard tower, and discard any extensions to the face down supply pile. If you spent any jokers, they're returned to the joker supply. As you can no doubt appreciate, it's much easier to play the low value tiles than the high value ones. Since tiles count towards their own cost, you can always play a tree immediately. But playing a six, unless you're using the benefit of jokers, is going to require either an entire set of that colour or of the six pattern. Remember that there are three of each tile and at most one of each pre-printed tile on an extension if you're counting the tiles as you play the game. Once you've paid the cost it's now time to find a legal place to put your tile into your garden. There are three placement rules. Firstly, you must place onto an empty light green section of either an extension or the fountain board. So here there are nine such spaces. Secondly, if the tile is to go adjacent to any tile already placed, including a pre-printed tile, then it must share either the color or the pattern of at least one tile it's adjacent to. This tile, for example, could not legally be placed here, but it could be placed here as it matches pattern. This tile could be placed here to match colour, here to match pattern, or here to match both. While this tile could be placed here matching colour but not pattern. 
that's okay as long as it matches at least one of its adjacent tiles. Thirdly, you may never have a duplicate tile or pre-printed tile in a contiguous group of matching colored or matching pattern tiles. This, for example, would not be legal because there are now two value four flowers in this light blue group. This is true for either placing the duplicate or joining them with an intermediate. This, for example, would be legal, but placing this in between would not. Your primary aim when making these placements is to create as many contiguous groups of color or pattern, which are at least three in size. This is what's gonna score you points at the end of the game. Finally, note that only colored tiles may be placed into your garden. Jokers may never be placed. After making your placement, check to see whether any of the printed structures have been encircled. If so, you'll be rewarded in jokers. You'll gain one joker for the central fountain, two jokers for each bench or statue, and three jokers for the gazebo on the extensions. This placement here is worth a total of three jokers, which are added to your storage board if you have room. If you run out of room, any excess are lost. The third action is to place a garden extension, and you can do this in two ways, either by placing one from your storage or placing a blank one from the supply. We'll talk about the stored ones first, and placing a stored garden extension is essentially the same as placing the tile that's printed on it. You'll pay the same cost that you would pay to place that as a tile, and then put it onto the main board according to the same tile placement rules as before. So this would be a legal placement matching the symbol, as would this, because you can always place a tile that is not adjacent to any other, but this would not be legal. Your other option is to lose six points to take one of the face down garden extensions from the supply and then add it immediately to your garden board without paying any tiles. Keep an open mind to these tiles. Even though they cost you points and don't have a gazebo for gaining jokers, they do give you more flexibility when creating overlapping clusters of tiles. Your final option is to pass, and once you've passed, you can take no further actions this round. The first player who passes takes the first player tile and loses one point. This player will play first in the subsequent round. Additionally, when you pass, if you have any tiles or extensions that you don't wish to keep, you can discard them. However, you will lose victory points equal to the value of that tile or extension for each one discarded. For example, if I didn't want this tile and discarded it, it would cost six points. Once all players have passed, it's time to move on to round scoring. At the end of each round, you'll score points for each of the matching tile types shown in this round, as well as for each gazebo. In round one, for example, each dark green, light blue, and tree tile, as well as each gazebo, scores one point. So this arrangement would score one for green, two for blue, four for trees, and two for gazebos. A total of nine. Colors will only ever be worth one point, but the higher value patterns will be worth up to three in final round scoring. Then rotate the wheel to the next round and set up the new supply stack of garden extensions. If the draw bag ever runs out, then return the discard tower back to the bag. After four rounds, the game is over and players will total up their final scores. Any jokers left over in your storage are worth one point. While any leftover tiles and extensions are worth negative points equal to their value. So here you would lose eight points. Now you'll evaluate your garden for groups in each of the six colors and each of the six patterns using this marker to keep track of what you're scoring. If a contiguous group is a size of three or greater, then each tile in that group scores points equal to its value. A group of size six is worth a bonus six points. So for example, this is a group of three blues. It's worth one plus four plus two is seven points. This group of four light greens is worth one plus two plus six plus four is 13 points. This group of three flowers is worth 15 points, five each. And this ring of six trees 
is worth 12 points, one per tree and a six point bonus for being a group of six. Any groups smaller than three in size score nothing. Add up the points across all groups on your board and the player with the highest score wins. In the event of a tie, victory is shared. And that's how to play Azul Queen's Garden. We hope you enjoyed this video. If you find this video useful, please help us by hitting the like button. Subscribe to us. You can also hit the meeple in the corner to do so and hit the bell icon so you'll know when we have new videos. You can also follow me on Instagram for my board games journey. And if you have any questions, comments or feedback, please leave them in the comment section below. Thanks for watching and see you next time.